Hello everyone and welcome to our awesome entrepreneur series where me, Edward Zier, marketing mentor, Persian man, small business owner and entrepreneur, is interviewing some amazingly successful people. And today we have on our show the Matthew Craig from Mindduck. Matt Craig, say hello to the audience, Matt. Hello everyone. Now Matt Craig, a few of you guys, especially in Sydney, you're is quite known. Matt Craig is how old are you now? You're about what, twenty two? Um, uh, no, no. I'm I'm twenty eight now. Okay, now Matt Craig is 28. Um, I've known Matt Craig for about three years now, three, four years? Yeah, almost four, yeah. Yeah, and when yeah. I first met Matt Craig, him and I had, were just starting out had no money, didn't we, Matt? That is correct, yes. <laughs> and now, uh, Matt Craig was on my first clients, and now this guy's got more money than I do, don't you, Matt Craig? <laughs> I'm not sure yet. <laughs> <laughs> but look, um, well, what it is, Matt Craig is an amazing man. He runs a business called Mind Arc Digital Agency, and I actually interviewed his business partner last week, Sean Perez. and. Really, what today is about is really just an informal chat and getting to know who Matt really is and asking him some deep questions. So I was going to say, um, enough about me, Matt. Why don't you tell the audience out in the vast internet who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, yes, so you probably heard from my business partner last week, but um, I'm the other half of the business, um, director at Mindark Digital Agency. We um, obviously do e-commerce and website development and marketing as well. Um, and the business has been running for about three years now. Um, and yeah, it's been going pretty well. Yeah. And, and I was going to say, I've asked this to Sean, but I'm going to ask this to you for the sake of the, uh, uh, the interview. Sure. How many full-time staff have you got? Um, right now, I've got about five full-time staff, um, plus myself and Sean. So the team's about seven at the moment, growing. We, well, we got guys coming in for interviews and stuff as well. So, so how long have you been in business for? Um, Sean and I have teamed up at the beginning of last year. So before that, we were both just solo. Um, and then beginning of last year, we decided to team up and really make something of it. And um, so yeah, most of this growth was experienced in the last 12 months. So what, about three, four years in total you've been in business? Yeah, about three years, yeah. So in three years, mm -hmm. you've got five full-time staff and a business partner in three years starting with nothing. Y yes, that's correct. We started from zero. <laughs> now, I know the story because, yeah. I, I, again, you hired me to help you get there. So sure, please yeah. hire me, everyone, but no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But tell, how did you do it? Like, so I'll be straight up with you, Matt, and you yeah. know this. Yeah. There are very, very few people that let alone succeed in business, let mm -hmm. alone achieve what you have achieved so quickly. Mm. How did you do it? How did you achieve what many don't? How did you make it? Thanks. Um, I, th I think it's, it's really hard to, to pinpoint the one thing for me that I think made the difference. Um, but obviously, I tried to build up a really good network as my initial strategy. And that's really worked out for our business, I think. Um, we, we have a good support network, people who we can trust, that we can talk to about the various um, challenges we come across over the, you know, the business journey and the development. Obviously, you've made a big difference in our, into our business, um, not because you're interviewing me, but <laughs> because I think you've um, really helped us over the years. Um, and yeah, I think it, it was just really down to trying to be honest the whole time. Like, so honest about what services you provide, um, if you know, we initially we got a lot of the trouble we got into was um, thinking we could do something and then having a hard time delivering that. And um, we found that once we realized, you know, if we pull back a bit and tell the client, you know, this is actually something that is difficult to, to perform or we've never done this before, but we're happy to give it a go for you, um, that made the whole relationship a lot better. And I think for us, we, we've never done really much advertising for our business so far, and that's what we really want to do this year. Um, but we're actually getting a lot of um, referrals from people we've worked with or people who know us. And I, I think that's just a testament to the way we work, I think. But that's only a speculation. Because, so. I, mean, I mean, just for the audience, I mean, you do websites, you do SEO, you do what, pay-per-click and social media campaigns, don't you? That's right, yeah. So um, we focus these days um, on two main areas. It's usually e-commerce website development, um, so selling a concept or a product online. Um, and then to complement that, we do all the support services, which is um, obviously getting people to your site yeah, yeah, in target market, using the right channels to get that, that traffic to your site, and um, leveraging things like Google AdWords and um, Facebook advertising and stuff like that. So your services are, a lot of people offer websites. You know, I, I can go. To, I can what go to the Philippines, where I suppose you're from, or I could yes. go to, well, yes. half from, I should yeah, say. Yeah, that's that's true. Or yeah. I could go to India or the developing world to get a cheap website. Yeah. So, and I know hundreds of people who do websites. Yep. So, 
how did you rise above the crop? How did you mm. exceed the whole market? And I think it's a fair question. There's got to be. It wasn't luck. No. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's a hard question, but I think um, obviously people. There, there's certain people that want certain things, like business owners who. Some people just want to not spend money, and they they'll go for the cheapest option, and that's you know that's what they want. Um, and then there's people who are looking for something else, someone who maybe has local market like knowledge who can de- develop a, a concept without having to be spin fed every single detail or intricacy. Um, and I I hope that we fill in those blanks for the clients that come to see us. They they come to us with maybe a, a concept or an idea, and then we give them uh, a framework that they didn't expect to have or to they didn't really have knowledge of before they met us and that's given them the confidence to want to work with us to give them the a good first step in the right direction i suppose so um, so you're saying that you give people the knowledge hmm. compared to everyone else hmm. and that's what is one of the reasons that gives you an edge that's paramount to your success I, I think so i think our experience and the knowledge we have about the industry we're in helps us definitely get or, or build this business that we're working on at the moment um, so yeah, I mean, obviously it's a little bit easier working with someone local than overseas over emails, um, and that's where you know a lot of the industry is going. You're doing a lot of overseas freelancing and stuff like that, but you know you don't have someone on the ground that you can go visit on a daily basis in case there's something you want to talk about or discuss an idea or a concept that you want to run. Wow, wow. So. How did you get started? How did you yeah. get traction first? I can understand okay. that you've got all these great referrals coming in, which is outstanding. Sure. How did you chicken in the egg? How did you yeah. overcome that issue? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was a bit of, I mean, you remember the, probably the first day you met me. This was all about survival mode. <laughs> yeah, survival mode, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm sure a lot of the people who know you are familiar with. Um, and that's when you first start your business. And if you're a business that's starting from scratch with, with nothing, um, you obviously have a lot to lose, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. Um, it, it's it's a risk, but obviously you're hoping that the returns will happen one day. But um, in that initial phase, you do anything to make sure that you can keep afloat, like cover the cost, just you know, bare minimum survival, that kind of stuff. Mm. And I think that really, obviously, that pushed me to work really hard um, in in the initial phases. And then um, it, it wasn't easy to get out of. Like that whole period probably lasted at least six to eight months, um, where you, you know you were making just enough to go out and do more marketing next month, you know, or making just enough to go to your networking events and, and fulfill the work and pay your bills and stuff like that. Um, and then one day you just, I mean, I, I don't know, I just, I, I purely think it was the network just growing and, and organically getting bigger and bigger. And um, that leading to, obviously our portfolio was growing during that time. So, you know, confidence, like buyer confidence was getting higher because they would come to us and they would see what we've done. Okay, yeah, you've done a lot of jobs here. We'll, we'll work with you and it was easier the first sale was obviously difficult because we've never done anything and they were like oh, what have you done we could only show them so much um, so I, I'm sure all those factors played a part I like yeah. what you said they're being buying confidence and yeah. it's funny as a marketing mentor I've mm-hmm. spoken to thousands of people I've helped thousands of people and mm-hmm. I've never heard anyone express it as buying confidence and okay, yeah. tell me more about what that means it almost sounds like a wolf on wall street sort of <laughs> term you know, yeah, a bit yeah. of a Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> reference <laughs> Yeah, well, at least like the big flash parties <laughs> yeah, that you yeah. run and the Ponzi schemes. Is yeah, no, no, no Ponzi schemes or drugs. That's not me. But um, yeah, um, I, I suppose it's, it's about um, when, when buyers come to you, they, they have the confidence that you can deliver what you sell. Um, and that's, I suppose, when you're starting up, that's the hardest thing because you yourself may not have the confidence because um, you either haven't sold before or it's just something really new to you. So you're trying to explore um, what options you can and cannot. Um, offer or talk about to your potential clients because you may not be familiar with dealing with clients yet. Um, and there's, there's a whole range of factors that um, I'm sure people can read, like body language and the way you present yourself. Um, that they can tell whether you're really either really confident in what you offer or the solution. And, and that confidence obviously rubs off and they get the feeling um, and probably want to work with people who are confident rather than people who are scared about providing a solution to you. So, so chicken in the air question, when you started off your business and you had that fear, yes. how did you overcome that fear to get some clients so you can be confident? You know, which, which came first? <laughs> it's all about pretending to be confident. Oh, no, pretending. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, um, I think um, when I first started, like, I think when you start a business, you have to have a certain level of confidence if you want to be successful. Um, you obviously started with the plan that you thought you could be able to grow something. 
Mm. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't always work out in the very beginning, but as long as you have that drive and you have that vision, um, then you're confident that the work you take on, you'll work extra hard to make sure that it will deliver. Um, and as you get used to it, you know exactly, like you get used to your product, your service, whatever you're doing, um, it's easier for you to communicate that to the right person or the person who wants to buy from you. Right, so you're saying once you overcome it, you get some traction, then it's easier to grow and grow from there. I think so. I think as every day you learn something new, I think I still learn things today. And it's been three years, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're running a business for three years straight, you'll understand how much work that is. Well, I imagine <laughs> us. Yeah. I mean, my maths isn't that good being yeah. a market, but it's 365 yeah. days in a year. There's three yeah. years. Yeah, exactly. There's what, probably 1,200 things that you've learned. Yeah, oh, I, I Easily, yeah. 1,200 things. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny, and it's mm -hmm. interesting where we're sort of going here, and I just want to actually wind the clock back a little bit. Mm -hmm. What made you get up one day mm -hmm. and say, mm -hmm. I'm going to start a business? Okay. What, yeah. what made you say to your old employer, and who was your old employer too, and say, okay. I'm out of here, I'm going to start my own business? Okay. Tell us your story. How did <laughs> okay. that happen? Um, I've, I've always, I suppose ever since I was in high school, um, I always was very interested in, in the concept of, of having a business or an empire. <laughs> an empire, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was, obviously everyone thinks that's, that's yeah. cool when you're that age. Typical boy thing. Exactly, typical boy thing, right. Um, and then, you know, over, over the years, like, I, I was exposed to different business concepts, like friends, I had friends with similar ideas um, here and there. And, you know, I, I, there was opportunities, um, nothing really that really clicked with me, but I was going through the normal process of, you know, finishing high school, high school um, counselor recommended me a degree. So I got into an engineering degree and then I spent two years trying to make that work and then it didn't really work for me, I didn't really enjoy it. So I changed to a, a business degree because I thought, hey, you know, I've always thought about business, why not just pursue it and get an education in, in the area. So then I switched to business and I realized that, um, I don't know, there, there are a lot of um, theoretical things to learn about running a business. But today, if you ask me again, what I've learned when I first started the business is completely different to what mm. I was learning theoretically. Mm. Um, so I don't know how useful the university degree was, my, my business degree was, but um, I completed that. And then I went on, as anyone who finishes a business degree does, I became an accountant for a while. I didn't know that. You yeah. were an accountant. Yeah, I was, I was about to start my CA. You would have been really bad at that, wouldn't you? <laughs> uh, well, maybe because, yeah. I, don't know I just can't imagine you doing it. You're just like this uh, awesome entrepreneur that does online stuff. I can't yeah. imagine you pumping out basses all day. Exactly, anything. yeah. Um, I, I have to say that it was a really good background to have when I started my business. Um, mm. Just having the, the general understanding of taxation and, and you know all that kind of stuff is very important. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was doing that for about a year. I was wow. working at, at a, a chartered firm in, in the city called Bell Partners. Um, and it was very interesting. It was it was an interesting company to work for. Um, we did a lot of celebrity accounting, so we did a lot of sports people. Wow! Um, and we had sports people coming in all the time. And would you see all their credit card statements? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Well, especially yes. I I remember doing some transfers for tax returns, which are pretty interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is being recorded, by the way. I and, know, so uh, no, no names mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> So I guess um, we'll leave your address in the call so the yeah. AFP can knock on your door and start interrogating you, uh, Matt. Perfect. Sounds good. Yeah. Matthew Craig from Mind Dark based in... Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm going to change my name. After that. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, and, and that was my first kind of career move. And I quickly learned... Well, what happened was uh, I spent a year doing that and then I went overseas with some friends and it gave me time to think. I was away for about three or four weeks in Europe. It gave me some time to think and then... I came back and I realized this, was, this wasn't what I wanted to do. Mm. And you know, anything I did, I was going to move backwards because if I wasn't going to be pursuing my, my accounting, then I'd have to start again somewhere. So what, can you tell us, mm. what were some experiences that you had that made you think, mm. this is not the path I want to be pursuing? Um, I, I think it was just about you know, the type of work I was doing. Like, I didn't feel like it was something I could do for the long term and it wasn't fulfilling. Um, I didn't feel like this was the challenge that I was looking for. Were you, were you bored at work? Yeah, definitely. Frustrated? I, I, um, frustrated by the politics, definitely. Mm. I think corporate politics is, is one thing that I, I really dislike um, sometimes, depending on the company you work for. Um, and I think that, in terms of frustration anyway, but in terms of boredom, yes, definitely. I think um, the fact that when, when you're part of a big company, you're really just a little tiny module in the whole framework, you know what I mean? Like you're just little 
you do something, I mean, not to say anything bad about big companies, but um, sometimes you kind of get lost in, in the whole process and the flow, and you get so specialized that your job becomes quite, you know, I don't know, repetitive or you know, very simplified, and you don't really get that day-to-day -day creative challenge of trying to solve a problem or, or, or that kind of stuff. Um, and I think uh, I might not have thought of it in this exact way when, at the time, but at the time I just had this feeling that I, I didn't, I wasn't doing the right thing. So I thought, okay, I'm just going to quit my job and, and do something in the meantime to think things over, to try to figure out what I want. So I, I was friends, um, I did some work experience, sorry, at, at an agency when I was studying at uni. And um, I, I contacted them and I said, you know, I'm, I quit my job, do you have any work I can do just, just for the meantime, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm in between careers type thing. Mm. And they were like, yeah, sure, you know, you, you understand our business a little bit because you've worked with us already. So I come in and I did level one customer support, basically. And um, I was only planning to be there for six months <laughs> and I hopefully make a decision after that. But um, after three months, I was promoted to an account manager. Um, so I started dealing with clients for the company um, and it was to do with um, digital marketing. Um, mm. So my knowledge was slowly growing in, in this industry. And um, like when I was younger, I was like kind of played around with the whole website concept. Like as a lot of kids and in my kind of generation did just because the internet was one of those new things, everyone wanted to try it. Um, and so I had a bit of technical knowledge already. But um, yeah, definitely working there was really great. And when I did that, I started learning about sales and marketing and managing a team. And um, I worked there for five years. And so I was basically um, quite high up in the whole chain. It was, it was only a boutique agency, about 15 people. Um, so it was, I suppose, that was really awesome. I, I loved my job there. Um, it wasn't like I was making huge amounts of money, because it definitely wasn't. But um, it was just a really enjoyable work environment. Um, and then one day I was just, well, not one day, for about the last six months, I was constantly um, just talking to my old boss and asking her what opportunities I would have in terms of my career growth, like what could I do next for the business. And she was basically, she suggested that the only other thing I could do was take her job, <laughs> you know what I mean? Which is like, and she's not going to give, oh, see, she owns the business, she can't give away her job, right? Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay. <laughs> and then this was like, outside of work hours, um, we were just discussing over um, di uh, dinner and she was suggesting to me that I should think about starting my own business. like. She may have had a few drinks by this point. Oh, so, so, <laughs> so is, are you using, did you use your masculine charm on her, get her drunk, and Daniel Craig style got the information about the Russians? I, I may have accidentally in that. <laughs> um, but um, I, was, I was really happy that she was honest with me about that. Because um, I don't think many people will, will tell you something like that, if, like, especially someone you work for, and you know, you, I'm assuming I was valuable employee there yeah. um, so <clears throat> it must have been not the easiest thing to say you know you should start your own business like why would she try to throw away like an employee that's hard and of course not I mean and talking personally too as you know I've had some great bosses but I've had some downright piggies of bosses yes absolute piggies and yes. uh, yeah. you know they would do the opposite they tell you you'd never make it out there so you'd feel dependent on staying with them for your whole career yeah that's that's right and um, so I was pretty happy that that she um, gave me her real opinion mm. um, and I, I took it literally as in the next day I handed in my resume oh my resignation <laughs> like, so, so we so had dinner on that, Thursday night Friday morning I came in handed in my resignation <laughs> so that wasn't a smart move on her part <laughs> well, I, well I, I, probably not but <laughs> well my move was probably not smart it was not thought through at all I was basically running on pure like spur of the moment I'm gonna do this now take the risk and I'm, I don't want to wait because I'm just going to procrastinate. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. the next day I was like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to force myself to do something. So, so what was this burning desire that was making you do this? I just felt like if I didn't, I didn't want to regret not giving this a go, um, if that makes sense. Um, I could have easily got caught up in working, you know, as an employee for the next 20 years. So, so you felt that unless I jump off this cliff right now, mm. I'm not going to do this till 20 years later and then you'll yeah. be a burnt out Persian marketer at the age of 30 doing it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not quite. But um, yeah, that's, that was my, my big motivation. I, I thought I had nothing to lose, you know, I didn't have as many responsibilities as I may have in the next 10 years. Um, so why not? Yeah. So, in other words, you did that. You woke up that morning. I've had enough. There's my resignation. Yeah. And then, what I met you, what 
three months later at a networking event about three and a half years ago. Pretty much. Well, yeah, that was August 2010, was it? I think it was 2010. It's been, it's been a while now. Yeah, it was August 2010, and I met you in January 2011. January 2011. Yeah, so that was three years ago. Yeah. It was three years ago. We've yeah. known each other for over three... This is our three-year anniversary. Yes, it is. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so, um, yeah. And, and you've got to be careful. Don't take Mac Craig out to dinner. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. So that's, that's an amazing story. And yeah. I mean, to people in your position, to people mm. who are, let's say, stuck at work or people who have just started in business and mm. they're not feeling right about themselves, mm. what would be your advice to them? I mean, okay, so... My, my move was definitely, it had its risks. Um, if, if I had a massive mortgage to support and kids to feed, obviously those would play a factor. Yeah. <laughs> but all I had to do was like protect myself at the time so I could live anywhere if I needed to. And as in like I could pay like as much as, as I could for some dodgy apartment but, or share accommodation and I could eat stuff like noodles. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, if, if you have certain responsibilities, it's, it, it does play a factor. But if you do have an opportunity to take a risk, and you're just kind of making excuses to yourself. I think, I think it's worth it. Like no matter mm-hmm. what happens, if you fail, you're gonna learn so much anyway. Like the first six months of business, you learn heaps. And especially if you start talking to other business owners, everyone's happy to share their journeys with you, so that you get a bit more perspective. Um, and I think taking that risk is definitely worthwhile. Hmm. Wow, wow. So it just sounds like one day you just took the plunge and you did it. Yeah. And it looks like that you weren't afraid of failure. Oh, okay, well, that's funny. Um, in the beginning, this is funny, this is something I learned from you, actually. <laughs> funny you mentioned this. Um, in the beginning, I, I really hated failing, obviously. I think most people do, naturally. Um, but then there was a presentation at one of the networking events. I think you were there, and I think you were part of the presentation. But um, I was talking about how failure was the, the path to success. Yes. Basically, something along those lines. And I, that really, I mean, that got me thinking. And then obviously, I think I had a chat with you about it after. And um, it, it made a lot more sense because the first time you have a big failure, it really like hits you hard. And you remember that? Yeah. 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 And I remember you telling me like, after this, next time it won't be as bad. Yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then like every time after that, something happened. I just remembered that. I'd be like, oh yeah, it was definitely not as bad as last time for some reason. And you don't know why. It doesn't make sense. It's just like yeah. your, your skin gets tougher. Well. Yeah, the, the brain just like, yeah. here we go again. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh, another one of these. I think it's like the first time you get a parking fine, it's devastating. After yeah. the 10th time, it's, oh, well, <laughs> let's, go, let's go to internet banking and pay the stupid government. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. I think it's something like that. Um, but I, I definitely think responding to failure is a big part of running a business. Um, learning to respond to it without eating yourself up too much mm. is very important because it can eat you up when you do something wrong. Like these days, like someone makes a mistake, we still like I still feel bad. Like in our in our business, like obviously we, we want the client to be happy. We don't want them to be upset, but we do as much as possible to turn it around. Mm. Um, and that's only that's just part of running a business. There's always going to be problems. You just got to know how to deal with them, I suppose. Wow. Mm. And if you could, let's say, go back in, a, we'll go on a time machine now. We'll get the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Yeah. Marty McFly and Doc Brown gets us, and we're going to hop yeah. in that DeLorean, and we're going to go back in time. Yeah. And let's say you're going to talk to yourself the day before you met me. Yes. What would advice be? Would you say, look, don't go to that event and don't meet Edward Zier? Like, what advice would you give to yourself? No, no. I, well, I think, well, I don't know any better because I've only done it my way. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but it's... I th- oh, there's definitely things I would not do again, but I think networking is definitely a huge bonus. If it doesn't give you business, at least it's going to give you um, the ability to, to talk about what you do. And as a business owner, that's very important because when you start off by yourself, you're the only one talking about your business. Um, but, but you got most of your business through networking at the start. Oh, I definitely did, yeah. And so I definitely recommend networking, but um, I'm not saying it's, it's the solution for everyone, mm. and it might not be, it, but it is definitely something that helped um, our business, and we were a service-based business, um, our product is, I suppose, it, it's very transferable, like every industry could use it, but I mean, I suppose the main thing is learn to accept failure as soon as possible, mm. if I was to go back and tell myself again. <laughs> yeah. Learn to accept failure. Yeah, yeah. learn to accept failure, um, but at the same time, you got to learn from that failure, you know what I mean? So don't just brush it off, just say, okay, we've made a mistake. How can we turn this around mm. so we don't make a mistake again? But if it's something that's unavoidable, how do we deal with a situation like this? 
Um, yeah, that, that's, I suppose what else would I tell myself? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of things probably. <laughs> oh, but that, but that, that sounds great. I think um, I think in this great you know 25 minutes we've spent together, we've really sort of dug deeper in a few key themes. Mm. And, you know, I think you've come up with some real compelling points about dealing with failure and moving on with business. And mm. you've achieved something amazing. Very few, very few people do it. So no, my question is, as I sit here with this interview on the 5th of February, 2014, mm. where to from here? What are your big plans? Are you allowed to tell us? Uh, yeah. I, this is being I, recorded, may I say. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, I've got to ask my business partner first. <laughs> yeah. no, um, I mean, um, we have, we, we try as much as possible to discuss the direction of the business and it's one of the hardest things to remember to do once you get to a certain point you, you just get caught up in the day-to-day -day mm. operations and that's something that i mean i must happen to everyone i'm assuming mm. but you got to find time to step back and say are we doing what we want to do is it heading in the right direction what can we do better um just simple questions like that and i think that's what we want to focus on this year um you know growth is great but you know are, are we really leveraging everything we can to make that growth sustainable or can we increase our capacity for growth um, and that's really where we're at at the moment is preparing for that next step um, and who knows what that might be um, but we're, we're basically approaching um, different options and seeing which one we want to go down um, is it going to be a rapid is, is it going to be a slow organic or you know what's going to work for us and just trying to um, make sure that we're ready for whatever we're, we're going to do Wow, very compelling, very exciting. And there you go, you head it straight from the horse's mouth or the Filipino's mouth, in the case of Matt. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you, Matt, for the interview. That was amazing. To learn more about Matt Craig, visit www.mindarc.com.au or type Matt Craig into LinkedIn or Google and see what comes up. And thank you again, Matt. Any closing words for the audience? Um, you've been great listeners. Thank you. <laughs> no. um, yeah, I suppose like... I suppose a lot of you listening would probably be either running a business or interested in, in starting one. But um, I think there's always hard times, but you just got to get through those and you'll see the uh, shiny treasures at the end. <laughs> Absolutely. And at Excellence Above Coaching and Edward's year, we're all for shiny treasures. So thank you, Matt. You've been absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say to everyone listening out there, have a listen to the interview, read the transcript, really absorb what Matt Craig has been saying and work out how to apply it for yourself to improve your life, your sales, and your small business success. So this is Edward Zier saying, saying goodbye and signing out. And Matt? Yep, see you later. Have a great evening or day, everyone. See you. Bye.